Thank you for joining us on NCA Nationwide. I'm Naja Atutijani and we'll begin with news on the diplomatic front. Nigeria and the Kingdom of Netherlands have pledged to deepen the highly beneficial relations between the two countries in critical economic sectors, especially trade, investment and security. This is contained in a communique issued after the high-level engagement between President Mohamed Buhari and the visiting Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Mark Rutte. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletin. And the United Nations has reaffirmed its commitment to ensuring that women are adequately included in the center stage of global engagements. The president of the 74th United Nations General Assembly, Professor Tijani Mohamed Bandi, gave the assurance while interacting with Nigerian women on the first day to mark 16 days of activism to end violence against women in the world. Basi Taipang was at the Center for Women Development then of the event. In their various groups and distinctive colors with no ethnic or party disparity, Nigerian women gathered to receive the 74th Unger President, a gesture that is heartwarming in the estimation of the guest. We cannot advance society or achieve any SDGs if we do not make inclusion of women at the center of all we do. Our strong hope is that since a Nigerian is presently the president of the United Nations General Assembly, so much will be achieved to advance the cause of women in Nigeria under your able leadership. The visit coincided with the beginning of the 16 days of activism to end violence against women. It was an opportunity for Nigerian women to discuss extensively enters that affect Nigerian women. People that have been displaced, that in camps, they face this violation every day. So it is real and we all must come together to see how we can fight it. We have to address the root causes because if we accept sexual harassment, if we accept domestic violence, if we accept early marriage, if we accept trafficking of girls, then we are laying the seeds for what actually happens at the end, which is this extreme form that we call rape. We look forward to every interactive section and pray for fruitful, fruitful deliberation that will push the main agenda a kind of procession was made in memory of women who died as a result of gender violence. Basi Taipang, NTN News. And now to labor matters. The International Labor Organization and trade unions are building on existing efforts to strengthen labor migration governance, enhance employment prospects of potential or returned migrants, and support the reintegration of the returnees. This effort is in line with the Global Compact on Migration, which requires national advocacy and implementation of an effective labor migration governance framework, which will facilitate collaboration between trade unions and other stakeholders. Government should be focusing on the area of skill development for people of that nature. Government should be also thinking about what we call multilateral and bilateral agreements, which provide the framework within which people can move and earn decent earnings, and if they want to come back, they can come back and be properly integrated. Migrants workers' right to freedom of association and inclusion in collective bargaining are vital for avoiding inequalities. We believe this workshop will contribute to enhancing the capacity and making us more relevant 
and vibrant for our voices to be heard in the migration space. The outcome of the workshop is not only meant to benefit international migrant workers, but also internally displaced persons like those in the northeastern part of Nigeria affected by insurgency. President Muhammadu Buhari has written the Senate seeking approval of the 2019-2020 budget estimate of the Niger Delta Development Commission. This is pursuant to Section 18 of the NDDC Establishment Act. The President of the Senate, who read the communication, noted that it is the first time the Red Chamber has received a budget proposal for the NDDC ahead of the fiscal year requested. Coming under matters of urgent public importance, the Senate also adopted a motion on curbing electoral violence moved by Senator George Sekibo, representing Rivers East. Also adopted under matters of urgent national importance was the motion on the elimination of violence against women by Senator Betty Apiafi, Chair. Senate Committee on Women Affairs. Four bills, including one to establish the federal universities of Gashua in Yobe State and Wukari in Taraba States, passed second reading and were referred to the Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and TET Fund to report back in four weeks. Details will come in our subsequent bulletin. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says it has secured more than 900 convictions across the country in the year 2019 and recovered billions of Naira, which can be termed as a revenue generation for the government that formed part of the budget. The Secretary of the Commission, Ola Ulukoidi, stated this while receiving members of Course 28 of the National Defence College, who were at the Anti-Graft Agency to understudy the relationship between corruption and insecurity to help them in formulating policies that will promote good governance in the country. It is, there is every propensity that where you have corruption, you have insecurity. Uh, so there is a strong link. Uh, so if we as anti-corruption agency and also the military come together to partner in the area of national security, I think that will also help the national development of this country. When you are able to fight corruption, there will be a lot of resources that uh, the country can channel towards national development. And when there is national development, of course, it has a, a nexus with national security. If people are well taken care of. The visit is also an avenue to brainstorm and come up with ways of creating synergy between the anti-graft agency, the military, paramilitary and other agencies to combat corruption. The House of Representatives has resolved to constitute a committee to investigate alleged security breach and violence witnessed during the November 16 governorship elections in Kogi and Bayelsa states. In adopting the motion from the Deputy Minority Leader, Toby Okechuku, House members agreed that the report of the investigation after being conducted should not contain the name of any political party. The House is also to investigate an oil spill which led to fire outbreak in a community in Delta State as moved by Representative Roland Ibapa. The Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila read a presidential communication notifying members of the submission of the 2019-2020 budget estimate for the Niger Delta Development Commission for consideration and passage. Details of these will come in our subsequent bulletin. Meanwhile, the people of Badagri have expressed absolute confidence in the federal government's desire to check cross-border concerns in the overall interest of the country. Anthony Forson completes the report. When the federal government's high-power delegation touched down at the same border for an on-the-spot assessment, it was obvious that all does not seem well. Reason? It is no more business, as usual, where the federal government loses and a few people feed fat. The Information and Culture Minister told the youths of the area to sustain their confidence in the present administration as President Muhammad Buhari means well for their future. Baba Tunde Hunkwe is a member, House of Representatives from the area. We support government uh, policies, despite the fact that 
is coming with pain. But we are fully in support of the closure. Because we believe that it's going to bring good things to us. And to his people, he equally called on them to be law-abiding and respect constituted authority. To always be peaceful, to always cooperate with government and ensure that we are ever they put us or what we are ever way they say we should move, we should cooperate with the security uh, people. The federal government on August 29th decided to close its borders for some security reasons. From the semi border control post, Anthony Forson, NTA News. And on achieving SDGs, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohamed, says that more commitment is needed in the support for the decade of action in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. She said of major concern is the uncertainty which climate change is causing the world. Usman Aliu now reports. The dryness of the lake chart, and in contrast, too much rains in some parts of Nigeria beyond the capacity to support farmlands have good yields are just few instances of modern challenges facing the world. A call to climate action is one which the United Nations predicates can prevent humanitarian situations in some countries of the world. And so the visit by the United Nations Deputy Secretary General here is to advocate for more commitments from Nigeria in addressing key components of the Sustainable Development Goals. The GA took some stock taking on the SDGs five years in. Um, we are not where we ought to be. Uh, we're considerably off track across the globe. Uh, it's a global agenda. And as we come to Nigeria, we continue to advocate for the support for the decade of action, which starts next year, um, and that we look at the cooperation framework we have with you. The United Nations says Nigeria's rating at the moment is high on multilateral cooperation and regional leadership in Africa, just as the country is making a difference on good governance, economic development and fighting corruption. The Common Free Trade Agreement that was signed um, at the AU is also a, another um, entry point for supporting uh, the, the integration of economies across the continent. Climate action uh, is, is something we fully subscribe to and multilateralism. Uh, we see uh, in the world today um, certain pressures on uh, the multilateral system and, um, and we want to reassure you that, uh, that this government, this country, believes firmly uh, in multilateralism. The United Nations under her UNDP organ assured Nigeria and other countries of continued support to them and raising their ambitions on development. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. Let's now join Dotun in our Lagos Network Center for more stories on Nationwide. Hello, Dotun. Hello Najatu and welcome to Lagos. As part of activities to actualize its mandate aimed at coordinating and implementing the vision of the federal government targeted at the grassroots, the Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs is holding a strategic retreat in Lagos with key players in all sectors of the economy. Jennifer Igwe reports that the program is also meant to design framework to achieve set goals. President Mohamed Buhari's vision of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years is not just a target on paper, but one already in motion. One of the key targets of experts, stakeholders, and officials of the Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs at this four-day strategic retreat in Lagos is to design a framework towards achieving this goal and other plans of the government, particularly those aimed at connecting the grassroots more to government. And from the goals, we are not going to just do it, the kind of uh, uh, leave it uh, just vague. Mm -hmm. Each and every activity is going to be given a timeline. Agencies under the ministry have initiatives aimed at empowering Nigerians, and this meeting is a platform to deliberate on them. Take custody of all proceeds coming from national lottery and gaming operations 
in the country and channel these proceeds towards the execution of good cause projects. In August 2019, President Muhammad Buhari recreated the Federal Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs. The ministry has five mandates, which includes coordination of key projects and initiatives of the presidency, and actively collaborate with the private sector to create more jobs. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. Still talking economic development, Nigeria's rise on the World Bank's 2020 Ease of Doing Business Index has been described as a positive step to fast track the economic development of the country. Speakers stated this in Lagos while discussing the ease of doing business and promoting foreign direct investment. Ken Igbeluge reports that the discussion was at the instance of the Franco Nigeria Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It is said that Nigerians' population is expected to double by 2050. The federal government's drive to addressing the anticipated increase in population is to diversify the nation's economy. It is also to create the enabling business environment that will attract foreign direct investment. Speakers agree that the country needs to leverage on the World Bank ranking that indicates that Nigeria is now 146 out of 190 on the list of ease of doing business. Is that other states and also the federal government will be able to encourage changes uh, the way that these changes have been enforced in several fields in, uh, in Lagos and, uh, and in Kano. Nigeria is an attractive place to do business. We are at number three in Africa today, and I believe that in a couple of years we are going to be number one. Because of course, 200 million population, that's the biggest market in Africa. Look at our ease of doing business rankings today. Nigeria continues to climb. So in terms of global competitiveness, we are getting there. Agriculture was also identified as the sector that can do the magic and also create jobs for the teaming youth in the country. We need to focus on agribusiness. And as you're focusing on agribusiness, you also need to focus on other aspects of the economy. We are trying to invest more and more in agriculture to improve productivity, especially in the north of the country. It was, however, suggested that the provision of critical infrastructure will further galvanize the economy. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. Women in Nigeria have taken a stand against rape and all forms of sexual harassment and violence against women and girls with a call on victims to speak out. This was at a lecture heralding a 16-day activism in commemoration of the 2019 International Day of the Elimination of Violence Against Women, organized by Women Arise and the United Nations Information Center in Lagos. Ling Lineke reports. One in three women is said to have experienced either physical or sexual abuse. Violence against women and girls is rated among the most widespread and devastating human rights violations in the world. Unfortunately, most of these cases are unreported due to impunity, shame and gender inequality. The International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women is therefore in line with Sustainable Development Goal 5, which seeks to achieve gender balance and empower women to stamp out all forms of discrimination against women and girls in the society. What we are calling for is people to come up, to shout, to expose, to disgrace those who are involved in these acts. Theme for this year's World Day Observance is Orange the World, Generation Equality Stands Against Rape. When you balance gender, give women equal opportunity like men, most of the problems we have will be solved. The ability to stand firm and speak up we serve as deterrents for others. With a collective responsibility, the campaign aims at ending all forms of violence against women and girls by 2030. In Lagos, Lane Lenake, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. It's back to Najatu in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Dotu. 
and still on violence against women. The Taraba State House of Assembly is working to pass a law that will push for the elimination of violence against women. The speaker, Abel Peter Adia, made this known to women groups who thronged the house seeking legislation for prevention of violence against women. Joseph Otsen reports that the women groups were observing the 2019 International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women looks at issues bordering the human rights of women, such as intimate partner violence, social violence and harassment, female genital mutilation, and child marriage, among other violations. For instance, statistics made available by the United Nations indicates that one out of three women or girls experience physical or social violence in their lifetime marking the 2019 International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. The Federation of Women Lawyers in Taraba State and other women groups marched to the State House of Assembly advocating for enactment of laws and holding perpetrators of violence against women accountable. We have records, in fact we have lost count, record of 12 years, 11 years who have been made murders. As I'm talking to you, there are some still in the hospital and they have been put in they are all mothers now. Responding to Speaker Taraba State House of Assembly, Eber Peter Dia assures the women groups of renewed commitment towards making legislations for protection of all human rights, especially curtailing violence against women. We have already sponsored a bill amending the, the, the Taraba State Penal Court to now say that, look, if you rape somebody, you are going to life imprisonment. Yeah. The women groups presented documents to guide the legislators on how to protect the rights of women for consideration during debates. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Otsen, NTA News. And still talking human rights issues, Africa is being confronted with socio-economic and political challenges that experts say require multilateral cooperation and understanding to foster, which can be fostered by rigorous academic pursuits and engagement of practitioners, hence the maiden edition of the International Conference on Conflict Prevention, Management and Resolution in Africa, taking place in Abuja. Hamman Jabani reports. The conference, which is put together by the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolutions, IPCR, in conjunction with the Institute for Dispute Resolution in Africa, IDRA of University of South Africa, is aimed at strengthening the social, cultural, and academic relations between Nigeria and South Africa. It will also explore ways of managing disputes without resulting to violence in Africa, particularly in the post xenophobic violence with multi intra and transdisciplinary MIT approaches towards understanding and explaining the phenomena of conflict and development in Africa. Form a partnership that is targeted at strengthening the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa through rigorous and evidence-based academic exchange. We have to see to it that we one day achieve Africa that is at peace with itself. The conference with the team Conflict Prevention, Management and Resolution in Africa, stakeholders say a cross-disciplinary perspective towards Africa development with foolproof solutions and traditional African dispute mechanism, Africa will not encounter the current challenges in the near future. It is time for us to engage meaningfully and purposefully with one another fully define our identity, the African identity. Over 90 papers will be examined during the three-day conference. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. And to infrastructural development, the poor state of roads with attendant ripple effect on the socio-economic development of the country has remained a thing of concern for the government and citizens. This is what informed the meeting of the National Council on Works holding in Calabar, Cross River State, with stakeholders brainstorming on the way forward for the country. Omar Basiedet has details. This 
is the situation across some parts of the country with commuters and motorists daily thrown into untold hardship. With the meeting of the highest policy formulating organ of the work sector ongoing, hopes are high that the outcome would address the many challenges bedeviling this sector. The problems of the country in terms of road development and the rest of it is mired, so you won't know that something is done until maybe at a reasonable level when you have seen the signs here and there. But I want to assure you that progress has been made from last year to now. Permanent Secretary Crosshew State Ministry of Works and Housing, Dr. Ehot Achu, says the meeting is apt as it will consider various options available in road construction towards meeting international best practices. If we had had policies before in the past and they have not really worked, this kind of meeting will look at such policies and see how to, you know, change them to fit current times. The 25th annual meeting of the National Council on Works has as its theme infrastructure as the pathway for prosperity and draws delegates from across the country. In Calabar, Umar Basilid, NT News. It's time for a break now. Nationwide continues shortly after. It's come down to the 2019 Christmas celebration. Radio Nigeria, NTA and Voice of Nigeria points to set the tune for a season of joy with its annual festival of nine lessons and carols. Theme, Jesus in the midst of the storm. Featuring Professor Lars Ekweme Chorale, Lagos. <laughs> Classical operatic soprano by Abiodun Koya. <laughs> Instrumentals and special appearances. Save the date. It's Sunday, 1st December 2019 at the National Christian Center, Abuja, 3 p.m. prom. It promises to be soul lifting and entertaining as we showcase scintillating music from different parts of the country. Guest speaker, Dr. Paul Enenche, senior pastor, Dynamis International Gospel Center. Lessons will be read by notable Nigerians, including the special guest of honor, the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, S-A-N-T-C-O-N. Keep a date with Radio Nigeria, NTA and Voice of Nigeria, 1st December 2019, 3 p.m. at the National Christian Center, Abuja. Save the dates. We wanna wish you a National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and the introduction of measles second dose at 15 months into the national immunization schedule plus the flag off of 2019 general pilgrimage to Israel and Rome by the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, NCPC. These are our focus this week on NTA Tuesday Live. Tuesday Live, incisive and educative. Don't miss it. Nigeria is rich in culture, diversity, style, fashion, and delicacies. The authentic Nigerian food, fashion, and hair fair gives you the opportunity to showcase the best creativity in Nigerian food, fashion, styles, in natural hair, and braids. Don't miss this event. The two-day event is taking place at the prestigious Balmora Convention Center, Federal Palace Hotel, Amadu Beloway, Victoria Island, Lagos. Time is 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily from 16th to 17th of December 2019. Register now at www.authenticninja.com.ng to book your participation as an exhibitor. For bookings and inquiries, please call 0701-312-2480 or 0812-415-4257 or 0708-006-3188 or 0812-36 one two six eight five you can also send us an email at info at authentic .ng. follow us on instagram facebook and twitter at ninja authentic see you soon Apostolic Church Nigeria, Abuja FCT Metropolitan Area's Lona Territory invites you to the inaugural convention holding from Friday 29th November over Sunday 1st December 2019. The venue is the Apostolic Church Nigeria Metropolitan Area's headquarters, plot 494 Durimi District, Friday 4 p.m., Saturday and Sunday 9 a.m. respectively. Theme, the joy of the redeemed of the Lord. There will be the A5 day pre-convention revival ministering Pastor M. A-OK -okay and other evangelists. Date, 
Sunday 24th over Thursday 28th November 2019. Time 4.30 p.m. daily. Theme, Outstanding Honor, Pastor E. Ola Akerele, Overseer, I.A. Eden, Pastor C. O. Ola Kumi, Pastor A. O. Okewo, Pastor J. E. Okon, and Pastor E. M. Abu, Pastor Dr. L. O. Oladili, Pastor E. S. Awujide. Blessed are you as we welcome you to the Sanctuary of the Most High for Supernatural Turnaround. Be there. Rahu Datum Consult Limited, in partnership with National Information Technology Development Agency, invites the general public to participate in a two-day certification course on data protection regulation in Nigeria. Date, 27th to 28th November 2019. Venue, Bolton White Hotel and Apartments, 7 Gwandu Street, opposite Sahad Stores, Area 11 Garki Abuja. Participation fee is 150,000 Naira per participant and 100,000 Naira each for five participants and above. Payable to Rahu Datum Consult Limited. GT account number 051-008-8445. For further details, please contact Okilua Ernest on 0803-294-5904 or email us on info at rahudatum.com.ng or visit our website www.rahudatum.com.ng. Now back to our first country on night our first story on Nigeria and the Kingdom of Netherlands. Both countries have pledged to deepen the highly beneficial relations in critical economic sectors, especially trade, investment and security. This is contained in a communique issued after the high-level engagement between President Mohamed Buhari and the visiting Prime Minister of the Netherlands. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. It was a warm and befitting welcome for the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rood by President Mohamed Buhari on his first official visit to Nigeria. After the exchange of pleasantries with their respective countries' delegations comprising ministers and chief executive officers of some major companies, the two leaders retreated for talks on areas of common interest. Apart from reviewing the progress made regarding the implementation of the Memorandum of Understanding on Deepening Bilateral Relations signed in 2018 in The Hague, the two leaders described as welcoming the high levels of bilateral trade volumes as well as privacy sector investments. A communique signed by the Nigerian ambassador to the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the deputy head of mission of the Netherlands Embassy in Abuja noted the contribution of Dutch private businesses to the Nigerian economy. While Nigeria confirms its commitment towards continuing reforms for a conducive business and investment environment, the Netherlands pledges to continue assisting Nigeria for an increase in agricultural productivity, especially horticulture, seed, and sustainable palm oil production. To Dutch people, everything in this country is huge, is big. It's absolutely clear that we have a lot uh, to offer each other. There are already strong economic ties between our countries. And I'm proud to say that the Netherlands is Nigeria's third biggest trading partner, as an exporter and as an importer of Nigerian products. And there's still a lot of room to expand our trade. The future of Dutch-Nigerian relations is full of opportunities. President Buhari and I will work hard to make sure that together we seize those opportunities. And I'm looking forward to that future together between the Netherlands and Nigeria. But can I also say that I look forward to working together with President Buhari because we have really struck a relationship which I value highly. President Buhari and the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rood also discussed the challenging security situation in Nigeria, the fight against human trafficking and humanitarian issues, with Prime Minister Mark Rood acknowledging the sustained efforts of Nigeria in the fight against insurgency as well as in countering violent extremism. He promised necessary support by the Kingdom of the Netherlands towards mitigating the impact of insecurity and displacement. For example, we discussed in 2018 at length, just to mention one issue, the Lake Chad question and uh, how can we work together. And we hosted a, a meeting in the Netherlands earlier this year on Lake Chad. And what can we do, let's say, in the immediate future 
uh, so separating it from the more structural solution. What can we do in the immediate future to uh, use some of the Dutch expertise in terms of water? And you know you have to call us when you have too much or not enough. If it is not clean or too clean, we can help you. And as the president was telling me, I think 30 million people you mentioned uh, are depending on the on the lake itself and the economy coming out of it. So this is an important. Just to mention one example of where we try uh, to be helpful. The next round of consultations between Nigeria and the Kingdom of the Netherlands will hold in The Hague in 2020. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. And now to information management. Newly inducted members of the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations have been charged on professional ethics and rebuilding of the image of the country for national cohesion and development. The president of the Institute, Mokhtar Siraju, gave the charge at the induction ceremony of 40 new members in Asaba, Delta State. Unyinye Joshua witnessed the exercise. The inductees took the oath of allegiance to uphold the standard practice of the public relations profession. Into the membership, into the membership of, the of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. Commending the inductees, the president of Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, Mukhtar Siraju, said the law establishing the institute criminalizes any practice of public relations without license. We are not caught as members of NIPR joining the queue of division, joining the queue of negativities. No, let us try to stand out of the park. Chief Frank Tamuno, a fellow of the Institute, reminded the doctors that they are venturing into a profession that lays foundation for success, builds reputation, and there is a need to understand the corporate world. And this foundation is based on two things. The truth and the legality of it. The inductees were presented with certificates of membership. For me, public relations anytime, any day is about making uh, friends for either the organization, the institution, or the community that you find yourself. Uh, being a member of this profession is one way to understand the dynamics of uh, public relations. And as we have taken the oath, I pray God helps us to take it to another level. Nigerian Institute of Public Relations was established in 1963. It attained the status of a chartered institute on 1st of June 1990 in Asaba, Onyinye, Joshua Ifai, NTA News. Well, congratulations to the inductees. Caleb is standing by in our JOS Network Center with more reports from there. Says it is committed to building a strong, prosperous, and safe environment to make the state first choice investment destination in Nigeria. We sincerely apologize for that mix up there. We'll go on a break now. Too scared, so, you know, that he had dropped that side of his life. I have to give a shout out to Uzi Quindu. He came in and choreographed that fight scene with RMD and six guys in the bar. So I had boxing lessons, I had some kick lessons. In preparation for the movie, I had to go to drifting school for about six months to learn how to drift. Everything was well done. I think you had to go that extra mile to make things as authentic as possible. When you have like problems that are real, it kind of brings something extra to the acting. So when the gun shot went off, like even us, the crew, we shook. Twenty years of travel and counting. Twenty years of promoting tourism in Africa and diaspora. Over three million kilometers traveled. Over thirty African countries visited. Explored the diaspora in four continents. Connected over one hundred thousand happy tourists to Africa. Reached over fifty million homes. Igniting smiles across Africa and beyond. As Google Africa turns twenty, we thank you and invite you to join us in the quest for twenty must-visit destinations. In part 
partnerships with the largest TV network in Africa, the NTA, Ministry of Information and Culture, Ministry of Transportation, Studio 24, Delta Airlines, Tour Brokers International. You too can still be a partner. Call the numbers on your screen or info at gogeafrica.tv. Goge Africa, celebrating two decades of heritage, travel and tourism. They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people. They traded their freedom, comfortable homes and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacitated and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant hearts of their men who paid this supreme sacrifice to keep them. President Muhammad Buhari enjoins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lunch. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lunch. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria PLC. My name is uh, Mr. Muftao Abiodun Balogun. We started this business four years ago, and this is the production outlet where we do about 4,000 to 5,000 birds per day. With the closure of the border recently, we've been experiencing massive surge in demand. Our sales per day now is going to be between 15 to 20,000 birds. We needed to expand all avenues because of the multiplier effect is creating. And the most interesting thing about this closure is that many of my farmers today are farmers with the recently and they are young graduates. What the government is doing will lead us right. And I can tell you, if the government sustains this thing, the sky will not even be a limit. Thanks for staying with NCA Nationwide. Now let's join Caleb in Joss for more reports. Over to you. Thank you, Najatu, and welcome to Joss. President Mohamed Buhari has tasked governors of the All Progressives Congress to devise practical ways of improving key infrastructure as well as exploring natural and human resources towards development of their respective states. This is content in his message to the third federal government, Progressive Governors Pali in Jos, Plateau State. Priscilla Grumnan reports that the theme of the Pali is strengthening public service delivery. The president, represented by the secretary to the federal government, Boss Mustafa, who commended the governors for their vision in delivering quality governance to their people, said the governors must ensure they provide basic and quality amenities to the citizens. We must all work together towards building a socially cohesive society in which the resources of the country work for all. Governor Simon Lalong, KB State Governor and Chairman of the Progressive Government and Chairman of APC, Adams Oshomale, reiterated that they are working on sustained ways of harnessing natural and human resources to be translated into uplifting the living with the hope of dialogue and cooperation between the which included the governors of Nasara, Ekiti, Edo, Kepi, and Niger states, as well as ministers of health, education, and transport, could not agree less that the time is now to deliver on their mandate to public service delivery. From the government house, Little Rayfield, Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. 
creating a strategic policy delivery unit across all levels of governance is the needed impetus for proper policy implementation in the country. This is part of the focal point of the Progressive Governors Forum Pali in Jos. Ndeyang and Deba Yang reports. To end the negative narratives on education, especially as it relates to the girl child towards providing a knowledge-driven economy, debts of primary health care under one roof, security, transportation, and social investment across the country. Critical players say peer review forums like this is the needed impetus for sustainable development. We are watching what we call the rapid reverse which is even and and and, and, and sector to repair all schools in Nigeria at every time using the platform. Here, in the industry of yeah. education, there are certain elements of education that I think, that I think uh, we should look at. On the sidelines of the Pali, the National Chairman APC, Adam Soshomone, and Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, restated government's commitments on autonomy of local governments and establishment of seaports in the country. But I am a believer that local government should be autonomous. But autonomy doesn't mean that there should be no oversight function. But the right to control their revenue should not be negotiable. Now we are building three new seaports. Three new seaports. The seaport in Boni, and then we are building a seaport in Lekki. Work has commenced in the one on Lekki. We are looking at who, other PPP, we are looking at those who can build the one of uh, Boni and Wari. The Pali, they noted, is a reflection of the commitment to work together to tackle challenges facing the country. In Jos, Indian and the Abagyang. We apologize for that hitch. The progressive governor's Pali has ended with a resolve to continue to strengthen institutional framework for effective service delivery that will meet the yearnings and aspirations of citizens of the country. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of KB State, Atiku Bagudu, gave this position while briefing newsmen after the federal government, Progressive Governors Forum Pali, held in Jos Plateau State. Prisla Grumnan has a report. In line with the theme of the Pali, which is strengthening public service delivery, the Progressive Governors Forum rose with the resolve to continue to strengthen critical areas of public sectors such as the economy, health, education, transport, security, and infrastructure. On the peer review mechanism, the chairman said the exchange of ideas and sharing of experiences by the various states afforded them to have major takeaways, which will be useful in their policy direction and implementation. The APC governors held the federal government progressive governors party on policy to review what has been achieved in the last few years from the last Friday and what we do going forward. The decisions were made which were very valuable and more importantly acknowledgements were made by the progress governors of the tremendous support and leadership and successes recorded as a result of the commendable leadership of President Muhammad Buhari. The Progressive Governors Forum further applauded President Muhammad Buhari for the giant strides being recorded by his administration towards building a socially cohesive Nigeria and also commended Governor Simon Lalong for his initiatives in ensuring that a new peaceful state is emerging under his uncommon leadership. In just Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. And that's it from Jos Najatu. We'll continue from Abuja. Thank you, Caleb. And now to health matters. The management of the National Orthopedic Hospital, Dala Kano, called on the Nigerian Television Authority to seek partnership in disseminating information about hip and knee replacement and spinal cord surgery ongoing in the hospital. Francis Form reports that this is coming on the heels of their Diamond Jubilee celebration. The National Orthopedic Hospital, Dala, is one of the three orthopedic centers in Nigeria. Established by the federal government to cater for people with bone issues and injuries around the bone as well as bone plastics. To this end, 
management of the hospital is creating awareness on the hospital's forthcoming Diamond Jubilee. It's about a week program where we are going to uh, do some outreach program. We are going to various local governments and in some states of the Federation uh, to actually give to the community uh, something back. If people are involved in road traffic accident, we try to fix their fractures. If people have diseases of the bone, we sort them out. Then if there are bones, you know, naked flames and the rest of it, uh, both acute treatment and then delayed treatment, uh, we sort them out. Executive Director of Finance, NTA, Mrs. Fatima Bada, who received the team on behalf of the NTA Director General, assured them of NTA's support in showcasing their activities and achievements to the world. We are, you know, in support of everything that is good. We are here for you. And uh, believe you me, those, those are the kind of uh, things that NTA is always looking out for. So as to be able to, you know, disseminate all the necessary information that you you are trying to showcase to the nooks and crannies of Nigeria. The National Orthopedic Hospital Dala Kanu was established on the 21st December 1959 by late Sir Ahmadu Bello in Abuja, Francis from NTN News. And so on science, policies of any government is often, are often reflected on the integrity and vision of the personalities of those in power at a particular time. The book, The Powers That Be, Thoughts and Reflections on People, Power and Politics, written by the editor-in-chief of The Sun Newspapers, Onoha Uke, presented to the public in Abuja, provides a clue on how this works, where the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Onu, challenged senior journalists in Nigeria to go beyond writing columns. Calvin Arunai has details. With the return of Nigeria to democratic rule in 1999, the nation has witnessed diverse experience in political, economic and social development. At the center of it all, are policymakers whose actions can either make or mar the nation's quest for sustainable development. How some of these decisions are reached and implications on the citizenry are the main thrust of the book from the viewpoint of a man who has been close to those in power. An effort the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bunaya Onu says, will give ordinary Nigerians an insights into the intricacies of the politics of governance. As you are contributing to scholarship, we thank you because this book will be read by so many people. Another senior journalist, Kasmia Lubekwe, who reviewed the book, described it as a chronicle of power play in political parties, government and policy formulation processes, which the author believe will help broaden the reader's knowledge. In the past, and what has happened today, so it is like history being documented. If you are familiar with his writing, you know his position on issues. It's going to be one book that will open up a new chapter of discussion in this country. Representatives of state governors, legislators and members of the business community in Nigeria were in attendance. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. Now Nigeria Premier Volleyball League enters day five. All this and our sports update with IODG Makindi.